Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to Channel Sport this morning. Many thanks for joining us again. I am Tayo Salam. A very good morning to you from wherever you're watching us this morning. It feels good to be here. Take you on the trip across the morning spinning world of sports. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let's start right. with the news making the rounds from this part of the world. And of course, we start with uh, good news for all the two players, those two players on target yesterday. Mm. Talking about Joe Aribo for Rangers and Victor Osime for Napoli. Both players scoring. As a matter of fact, Aribo got a brace yep. for his team. Talking about Rangers and both guys taking that form into the camp of the Super Eagles, which, by the way, opens today. All right. Uh, Super Eagles players uh, seem to be in great form uh, going into that uh, AFCON qualifier against Sierra Leone uh, on Friday. Of course, let's not forget uh, William Trus Ekong was on target as well as Pizza Olayinka in the Czech Republic. Also on the show, this time in the Premier League, where Aston Villa uh, stunned and thrashed Arsenal by three goals to nil at the Emirates. Ollie Watkins was the start of the show for Aston Villa in that game. Okay, also so on the show, yeah. yeah. Also on the show, let's talk about tennis now, where uh, there's a master of Paris, and that's no other person than Daniel Medvedev. Daniel Medvedev uh, won the Paris Masters title on Sunday as well, uh, defeating Alexander Zverev in three sets. That's his first title of the season. And the last time we were on the show, we talked about how Daniil hasn't had a great season and perhaps this might just be, uh, you know, the time where he gets to win his first title. And that's exactly how it panned out. Daniil Medvedev is the master of Paris. All right, so that's how we start the show today from Paris, talking about Daniil Medvedev. We're talking, going to be here talking about Rafael Nadal. Yeah, but that's just so bad. Just happen, <laughs> didn't happen from the hoodoo. Continues, Continues for, for Rafael yeah. Nadal. But we'll start with Medvedev, Daniel Todd master, uh, Masters title 1, for him. Yeah. Uh, 2020 hasn't been good for the Russian, mm. it must be said. But in a game against... Uh, in a game between two guys who will be the face of tennis in probably the next 10 years. Right. Um, it, it lived up to my own expectation. Sure. And, of course, at the end of the day, there had to be one winner. Mm. Uh, no, no draws in tennis. Somebody has to win. Yeah. And Daniel uh, came out on top and is the champion. Yeah, champion of Paris, master of Paris, however you want to call it. I uh, lost the first set, 5-7, uh, uh, but bounced back nicely to take the second set, 6-4, six, 6-1. Six, I actually went into this competition 1-5 uh, down, losing record against uh, Alexander Zverev, uh, but was able to save six or seven break points to earn his third ATP Masters 1,000 crown. And as a result of that, is now the fourth Russian to qualify to actually win the Paris Masters title after the likes of Marat Safin, Nikolai Davidenko, and Karen Hachinov. And um, yeah, I mean, to the game itself, I was uh, second, and uh, the last set was a bit uh, disappointing uh, yeah. because, uh, you know, it's supposed to be a decider, supposed to be competitive. I uh, ended up being uh, one -sided you know, one-sided uh, situation uh, in favor of Daniil uh, Medvedev. And... Um, you seen pictures, uh, a lot of rallies, mm -hmm. um, extended rallies, and that was the strategy uh, from Daniel Medvedev on the day. And um, Zarev just could not uh, keep up uh, fiscally, uh, you know, with the grueling uh, rallies, and and that's how I ended up losing this particular match. You can see they're losing this game mm -hmm. uh, on double fault. Daniel had to come into this game very prepared. Um, Zverev has won five out of the six previous meetings, so mm. he, had, he had to take him seriously. But you begin to wonder if some of the off-court issues, uh, maybe, I said you need to wonder, I'm not, I'm not saying he did, but... Yeah, I mean, you, fair, you, it's you, fair. You, I mean, you, need, you need to wonder maybe those yeah. things, because if, if this guy has always had his number, and so on the day, first two set competitive, then third set was just... Yeah, it was just a blow -up. Just as if Zverev was like, let's just end this, let's yeah. just... Let's just <laughs> I, I said something earlier about uh, the way um, uh, Medvedev played the game. Yeah. Uh, a lot of extended rallies. Mm -hmm. uh, physically, I it's think, yeah, 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 physically, you just couldn't keep up. Uh, that's one of the uh, main reasons I feel uh, Zverev lost uh, that last set uh, scandalously. Uh, but congratulations to uh, Daniil Medvedev. That was one of his first uh, titles. This is what he had to say after that match. 
Oh dear, uh, Alexander Zarev, uh, there uh, with a message uh, to his uh, uh, detractors, call, detractors, haters, uh, as you want to call them, uh, <laughs> these days. He also revealed it will be a father as well. Yeah. So congratulations in, uh, you in know, advance. He's trying to let us know that look, good things are happening in my life. Yeah. For those of you who want to bring me down, you, you can continue. <laughs> uh, you know, and yeah. you know, there was no way he was going to escape the scrutiny of what was happening in his private life. Of course not. Um, those things yeah. have grabbed the headlines. And uh, even though the has a sports show, we try not to go into all of that. But it had grabbed the headlines. Yeah. And coming into this final, we don't lose, they were going to ask him. Mm. And so, he, and I like what he did. He just went ahead of the issue. He didn't wait for anybody to ask yeah. him that question. He addressed he said, look, it straight up. This is what is happening. Mm. And look, I'm good. I lost this final, but a lot of good things are happening in my life. Mm. I'm going to be a father soon. Yeah. And a lot of people are trying to bring me down. They can continue, but I'm going to stay up here because that's, this that's is where I belong. Cool. You, you've so, got to have a, have a thick skin yeah, to all uh, of those when, kind you're, of when you're an elite uh, uh, sportsman out there because you will be scrutinized yeah. as, as part. This comes with the terrain. And uh, for Medvedev, listen to him as well, to uh, earning 1,000 ATP ranking points as well as uh, 225 thousand euros for winning that competition before we leave tennis let's just tell you that the lineup is complete yep. uh for the atp world tour finals in london at the o2 arena all through last week i mean we talked about how yeah Diego schwartzman was trying to get the last yeah port. and how his destiny was in his, in own his hands. hands but he lost it <laughs> lost in the quarterfinals but somehow things somehow, somehow. still this conspired conspired and worked out in his favor, and that's why he's the last guy on your list there. Of course, the usual suspects will all be in London. Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, Dominic Thiem, Andrew Rublev, Daniel Medvedev, that's another Russian, that's two for them. Stefano Tsitsipas, who's the defending champion, Alexander Zverev, and Diego Schwartzman, the first Argentine to play at the ATP World Tour Finals since Juan Martin Del Potro in 20. You can't argue against this. It's, it's not too against this. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> rankings. It's how far you have done. It's the, it has nothing to do about pedigree. It's, it's rankings. You've got to what earn you, it. You got, you got to earn it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, so we're, we're not going to see Roger from. Federer and all the other guys, yeah. some of the other guys, Tan, Andy yeah, Murray. No, they, they haven't done enough. They, they've not done enough mm. to be here. Uh, it's interesting. We have two Russians there. Yeah, uh, Daniel and Roblev. Yeah. Let's see how far those two guys can go. Personally, I'm happy for Daniel that. Everything did just end in gloom and doom. Looks, that he got something. Looks, looks like his only You never know what happened in London. Exactly. As well, so. You never know. Indoors, hard court. Oh, you never know. So the draw for the 2020 ATP finals will take place on Thursday while the competition proper will start uh, on the 15th of November. That's it for tennis. Now let's move on with the show. And uh, let's talk about uh, we're counting down to the Olympics. Tokyo 2020, Yemi. Um, the way things are now, it looks like there might not be uh, a vaccine. Uh, maybe uh, there might still be COVID during that period. Mm -hmm. So what they've decided to do uh, in, uh, in Japan, Tokyo to be precise, is to hold uh, like a dress rehearsal, like a, yep. like a trial competition mm -hmm. uh, that can... Sh that, that a shows, showcase of Japan's readiness. Yeah, that you, they can actually host this thing just in case there's still COVID yep. uh, come next year in June. And that's why uh, we're seeing uh, pictures are uh, coming uh, from uh, the Tokyo's first international sports and events since the coronavirus mm -hmm. pandemic, uh, you know, uh, broke earlier uh, this year. Uh, it's a gymnastic uh, competition mm -hmm. uh, featuring uh, over 30 uh, gymnasts uh, from China, Japan, Russia, and the US. United States. Mm -hmm. And um, we're seeing all the protocols and all the procedures in place yeah. just in case they're going to have to host this competition with COVID still out there. And forgive a lot of the sports fans didn't see this as a gymnastics competition. They saw it as a dress rehearsal Ab for the Olympics to, to just to test whether or not Tokyo will be able. I, you remember the uh, IOC president told us a few days ago yeah. that look, there's going to be a lot of sacrifice, there's going to be a lot of tolerance, mm. and we must also prepare for the scenario. The scenario which, just in case. if a vaccine is not in place, the Olympics, mm. it, has to, it has to hold. It's so got to hold. It somehow. just got to hold. And Japan yeah. is showing us that look, well, we got you back. If, if there's no vaccine, we can do this. Mm. We can do it. It's interesting. You've seen all, the, uh, all, the, all those guys are very, very delighted. Uh, to, uh, you know, be a part of this competition. For a lot of them, uh, they've forgotten uh, what it feels like to actually 
uh, compete. Uh, it was a one-day exhibition uh, meeting, like we said, intended to show that the Olympics can open mm -hmm. in just nine months. So, uh, seeing, uh, like I said, the top gymnasts, uh, they were all there, and the top countries were all there as well. So, let's take a listen now to um, Thomas Bach, that's the IOC president, as well as uh, a couple of the gymnasts, what they have to say about this competition. There you go there, a couple of gymnasts as well as IOC president Thomas Bach are reacting to the hosting of that gymnastics uh, competition in Tokyo, which is seen as yep. perhaps a trial run mm -hmm. uh, for uh, when the games uh, proper begin next year. Also very important to note that mm -hmm. we saw earlier during, uh, you know, early in the, the, those pictures that uh, we saw fans actually, yeah. uh, were about 2,000 fans, and uh, you saw all the measures uh, put in place mm -hmm. and everyone uh, strictly uh, yeah. following all those COVID protocols. protocols yeah. So if we're thinking perhaps that, okay, might just be uh, behind closed doors, they've also shown that you can actually it's have possible. a few fans there as well. You know, and, and um, we'll be fine. I mean, look, this is, is like a, a, a true to form, you know. If you listen to what Thomas Bach yeah, said. said last yeah. week, they're beginning to refund some of the t tickets, money people paid for tickets. You know, people will come. It's not going to be behind closed but it's definitely not going to be full capacity. Of course not. That's, that's what's going to happen yeah. uh, in, in Tokyo. And I'm very happy I'm saying this. And I maybe like we it. can get an L Mary with a vaccine. Yeah, you know, we know. There's and, still, and, still and, a bit of time. And, and, I mean, the year that, is that, not that, over. That, that would be very, very, that would be very, very good. Yeah. But a lot of the scientists have told us uh, it's, it's, you know, it's very ambitious to expect to get a vaccine in the first right. quarter of 2021. Gosh. But let's see, sports must go on, life must go on, uh, and uh, we'll hope that everything gets better. Hopefully. Okay, so let's just leave this and come to our own mini Olympics mm. um, here in Nigeria, talking about the National Sports Festival. It's not going to use that um, the Sports Council have decided when uh, the... Uh, National Sports Festival yep. is, going to, is going to take place. It's going to be in phases yep. and all Stop. of those things laid down, COVID-19 mm. protocols to be strictly um, adhered to mm. and um, all of those things, very good. But leaving all that, the hosts talking about Edo State, um, <laughs> they've been talking to uh, Deputy Governor of Edo State, Felix Schreiber, who's been the face of uh, the National Sports Festival. He's been talking about a whole lot of issues, the state of readiness yeah. of Edo State, and the fact that Edo State is attempting a host and win a situation. Let me not put words into his mouth. Let's allow you listen to him, what he had to say immediately after those pronouncements were made, and we now know the dates when uh, the uh, National Sports Festival uh, will take place. Let's listen to Deputy Governor of Edo State, and we'll come back for more on sports this morning. The uh, suspension of the games, we were actually ready and uh, it was just two days to the tournament that was, uh, was suspended. And I can tell you that we are ready to host and we are also ready to host in a pandemic era. We are ready to take our position back as the, as the home of sports because Benin is actually the, the home of sports. So the first festival is like return of the native. And obviously, Delta will not want us to host, and we will not win. They will not allow their senior brother to be disgraced. So, uh, like the governor said, they, they won the last one. Now, Edo has to win, and Delta will be second. At the end of the day, Mende has won. <laughs> uh, let's go back to you know, bringing smiles to my face. I mean, that shows uh, you the history of um, I, I has been uh, the old uh, Bendel, how they've mm. dominated sports. And now, Edo is saying it's our time. Yeah, we're uh, hosting. To, 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 to world. We, we're hosting. But we'll see what Delta State uh, has to say about that. Yeah. And all the others as well, because yeah. you, you, never, you never can tell of course, um, of course, what, uh, what's going on behind but, the scenes. But I have to say, um, it also talks about being ready, and yeah. even before uh, the competition was mm -hmm. uh, postponed uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, so you just wonder what kind of what states these athletes are in. They've been <laughs> on a lockdown for yeah. a huge chunk mm -hmm. of the year, and I just Their performances. Uh, performance wise, I'm not too uh, excited right. uh, to see. Uh, but it's just good to have them compete after all. So uh, the year's not going to go uh, down as a waste. Uh, that's just a consolation. Uh, for it. Anyways, that's it for 
the Edo 2020 National Sports Festival. Uh, more sports are returning as well, too, including the king of sports, uh, football, the Nigerian Professional Football League as well. Uh, it's upon us. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a proposed date uh, already. And um, I'm very excited. Yeah, a lot of us. Yeah, because, I mean, it feels like ages now since we last uh, saw a ball kicked uh, in the NPFL. Yeah, so, and uh, we've been trying to look at the likely scenarios, yeah. what's going to happen, the state of readiness, the preparation. The other time it was about uh, criteria for stadiums right, to, yeah. to be used. Uh, so let, let's just allow you to enjoy this report put together uh, on uh, the upcoming season. Uh, that's in Nigeria Professional Football League, what to expect, and uh, touch up on a whole lot of things about Nigerian football. <laughs> It's been nine months fans and league enthusiasts have been to stadiums to catch a glimpse of NPFL games across the country, no thanks to COVID-19. The anxious wait could be over soon as the LMC has proposed November the 15th for the restart of a new season. Although fans will not be allowed to stadiums, the league body is setting modalities to have a robust league. First is the mandatory club licensing for teams. Before you go into club licensing, there are a lot of things, factors, eh, that need to be, the structure of the teams themselves, okay, has to be sound enough to encourage licensing. Because when you say so you are going wholeheartedly into club licensing, it, 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 it creates an, a, a professional environment okay but when you look at the, the 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 structure of the average nigerian team does it fit into um, a structure that can sustain the licensing these are questions you must need to you understand to answer first the lmc has so far approved 13 stadiums to host games the stadiums in lagos uyo benin city asaba port harcourt bauchi gombe Makadi, Abba, and Kaduna are among the ones given the nod to host matches. Another 11 were recommended for varying degrees of upgrade and repair works before they can be certified. I think if we have a friendly environment to play football, the player will be free. They will play without a fear. Because that is the only way you can see the best from the players when they are playing without fear. So when you are going to a match, you will look around yourself, you see that you are not safe. So psychologically, it will affect the players. Uh, for LMC now to take a direct, a direct very bold step to reduce the number of the stadium that are going to be used uh, they make sure every center are going to be used now meet the standard, security-wise and uh, uh, pitch-wise. I think it's a very bold step for our league. As the proposed date draws near, the LMC will be keen to see how clubs whose preferred grounds have been recommended for upgrade would be carried out. You're welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. Rotimi Akidele is in the house now. Rotimi, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Tayo. Good yeah. morning. Good morning, Yemi. <laughs> and what a day for you to come around yep, as well, yep. too. We're talking basketball uh, next. Uh, that's the next uh, on the menu. Uh, D Tigers uh, list, provisional list, uh, was released uh, by the coach or the MEBF. And uh, we're going to run through some of those names now and get the thoughts of um, Rotimi. And there are a few people out there. Uh, they're raising eyebrows, so a few uh, names that will know what I wrote to me uh, feels the same way. Also, Stan Okoye, we know Stan Okoye, Kechikun Wamu, Atalib Zana, Chim, Chima, Moneke. It's also Obi now, Michael Benije, uh, Obi, Emegano, Mike, there's Mike Eric, there's Tonye, Jackie Reed, there's Rashid uh, Sakaimon, uh, there's also um, Ekbe Udo, Ben Uzo, Christopher. Obepa, Ike Diogu, Braxton, Boise, Festos Ezeli, and John Ogbunu. Um, a lot of names there that uh, basketball fans are not very familiar with. Just um, as expected. Yeah. Right, because it's qualifiers. So why Why do you say it's expected? Uh, that we have a lot of uh, new faces. Because we have a new coach. Okay. So he's expected to try and go out or try and scout 
-hmm. for players that will make him succeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you don't want to trail with the baby with the bathwater, you don't want to ship out the old guards or the experienced uh, players that had been part of the squad initially. That's mm -hmm. why he's like the likes of uh, Ike Diogu, Stan Okoye, Stan. BDJ and the like. Right. Okay. Uh, like yes, they've got to just to stabilize um, the, new, the new entrants mm -hmm. and then uh, the old guards that has been uh, that has been there. Yeah, a few names. Festus is Italy for me. So you talk about Festus. Uh, I, uh, I, I I didn't at some point I, I I didn't think it was going to happen. At some point, uh, okay. I felt I mean while it was at its at the height peak, at the yeah, height probably yeah. that was when we should have had him. had him in the in the national team. I was twenty fifteen. I was twenty fifteen. Yeah. Uh, five years down the line. Serious injury, you know, and, barely played, and now he's on the team. That's strange. It's not, it's not bad. Yes, probably you need his kind of experience mm -hmm. if you need to compete at the players world on stage. That level, yeah. Players mm -hmm. on that level, so hopefully he can, you know, do away with all the injuries and all, and I mean, give it his best shot. But mm -hmm. I think because it's a new manager, we get to see new faces, and uh, we can only keep our fingers crossed and see how well they can blend. Mm -hmm. You know, before that um, tournament uh, proper starts in Rwanda. Mm. So no, no, no surprises for you. Totally expected situation. No, it's, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, mm. all right. All right so okay. don't ask, don't ask for the home guy, go home guys, because yeah, yeah, of yeah, course no, we're not going to do that one. Because exactly. they're, so, they're not playing, obviously. Like somebody will ask the coach, hey, why are you not inviting the no, club? No, that's, that's, that's not easy. That's let's easy. not do that. No, is it easy? Yeah. <laughs> well, there are people that still ask you, right? So You're right. Yeah, people still ask you. That's what I'm saying. The answer is, I mean, it's straightforward. Why is the answer not straightforward with the other sports? <laughs> is it, they ask for footballers well. That's what I'm saying. And but the NBA answer is not straightforward. Well, Football is <laughs> never straightforward. You, you know, we're about to talk about a lot of interesting things, but I think yeah. it's only right that we bring you into Absolutely. all that we're doing on the show. Rajivi is here with us, a lot of football over the weekend. And so let's bring you to all that we're doing. Let's uh, let you have your say on the show. This is how you can be a part of the show, just in case you join us for the first time. For questions, comments, suggestions on the issues we've, we've discussed, Paris Masters, we've talked about uh, football on the domestic scene, the Olympics, the possibility of it going on without a vaccine. We've mm -hmm. talked about all of that. And what went down yesterday in the English Premier League, Manchester City, Liverpool, Villa, trashing oh. Arsenal. And um, our players on target, we mentioned a couple of super Eagles players on target and the camp that opens. That's it on your screen, at channels underscore sports. You can also send us a mail, sports this morning, at channelstv.com. That's how you can be a part of the show. Tyre, let's move on. You are reading out names yep. after uh, names. Nigerian of, players, bang on form, mm -hmm. bang on form just at the, at the right time going into this qualifier uh, against uh, Sierra Leone uh, on Friday. So double head about... Uh, the first one will be played at uh, the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium on Friday. Let's start, of course, with the star boy. Uh, Victor Simen uh, scored his second Syria goal mm -hmm. of the season. Um, I mean, it hasn't been a prolific uh, start uh, to his career, uh, wrote to me. But second goal of the season, mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's not a bad return, considering he's still uh, trying to find his feet in the new side. After, uh, after about, I think, seven, eight games. Exactly, yeah. It's not bad. Not um, bad. It's his first season in the Serie A, so yeah. it's expected that he grows into mm -hmm, that position. Uh, the league, grows into that position, mm -hmm. tries to understand the entire team, yeah. what the manager wants and all of that. Mm -hmm. So... As long as he gets the chances and takes them, mm. you know, he gets his numbers will increase. Absolutely, it becomes a worry if he keeps getting the chances and he misses and, fluffs and, it. and he starts uh, to fluff his line. So, well, but I think it's still a good growth, mm. you know, considering his age, considering where he's coming from, yep. and uh, considering the standard of the league he's playing. Yeah, so good one yeah, it's a big step up from the, exactly. from the French. Uh, he was a fantastic and well taken header as well uh, mm -hmm. at the far it post. It was a good goal, yeah. uh, good move, good, good finish. Move, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, good good defenders didn't know where he was again. <laughs> and he was out of free header at the end of the day. So good one for uh, uh, Victor Simeon's second serial goal uh, for Napoli. Also on target uh, was Joe Aribo. Uh, was came back, was come back from injury mm -hmm. now, and it seems he's got, he's got about three, four goals. Incredible, he's coming back. Two, another two goals yesterday uh, and if for you score Rangers. Eight, if you score eight, you should. Uh, I mean, I saw the score line eight nil. Yeah, uh, scoring two was it was not bad for Arrivo. Uh, yeah, it was great. Actually. It looks like it, it looks like he's an integral part of. Whatever Steven Gerrard is trying to achieve. Absolutely. And that's yeah. what you can understand how, uh, how pained it was when Aribo got yeah, injured. Yeah, when he got injured, mm -hmm. the, the struggle a bit. But now that it's back, it looks like everything seems to be 
um, going on well. Yes, 8 0. You can look at the opponent and say, Hamilton. oh, it's just Hamilton, yeah. but it okay. doesn't matter. It it's still a top ten side. Still a top they're, side. They're, uh, they're, they're, play, they're playing Europa League, mm. so you probably expect maybe a fatigue or something. You know what, Ruti? So it's good. You know what, Ruti? Hey, Nigeria, after a big performance, here's what comes next. What? People begin to say, can't we change his position in the national team? Instead of him being and holding midfielder or some sort. Can we push him up? I, yeah. I don't think Genotra has actually played him I as a holding so. I midfielder. I don't think so, I agree. He gets in the box a he lot. He gets in the box a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think it's... he plays in the same role as what he's doing at Rangers. Yeah. Just play outside of the you, box, you don't think behind that... the... Front three. You don't think agree. there should be any difference? I don't think I mean, so. Just, just, just keep it. Just and, leave him and that's him. maybe I'll, I'm going to say this again. Probably f lots of folks will not agree, but Kelechi Nacho is not a top nine. Of course, Stop he's not. Stop playing him as a top nine. Everybody says yeah. he's, a, he's a power forward. No. <laughs> Kelechi's best performance, as far as I'm concerned, is to play behind the striker. Yeah, as a sports striker. So if you keep yeah. putting him as your top nine, and then he, but he, he had gets plays as a top nine for Nigeria. Because. Victor Simeon is that guy when it comes to the top nine mm. position. Yeah. Proud to Victor Simeon was Odio Egalo. Mm -hmm. So uh, but he I always mean, comes into that at, position. He always comes into that position because yeah. Um, I think comes in as a pep, sub on that paper city. They tried to play him as a false nine. Uh, we saw a bit of that at Leicester as well yeah. at some point, and then coming to national team, oh. Kelechi as a striker? No. No, it's not. That's you're just my opinion. You're right. I mean, it's not a striker. That's anyways. Uh, so that's it for uh, the Spurgles players. Uh, like we said, uh, William Trust Ekong as well has yeah, scored got his go. first goal for <laughs> Watford in the championship. Peter Lainka seems to be, uh, you know, uh, a bit forgotten at the moment. Scored as well too mm -hmm. for Slavia. Uh, Prague. Well, everybody will get invited. Yeah, exactly. Just and keep doing what you're doing. As much as Trust scored, yeah. I saw the goals they considered. Hey. Bit, yeah, you can't blame, you can't blame uh, truth for that. Maybe for the first one, I can. Really? Yeah, because he actually lost his... He uh, lost his man. He lost his man. Yeah. And then he went through, and then he got like, okay, happened. just watch it. Me. Especially, and he came off a long ball. Yeah. A long ball situation, so... Should have dealt with it better. I right? mean, he should... Showed good, character, good him, got, the character got the equalizer. Uh -huh. but, but overall, Brilliant. you would be happy... Where you put Ex all of this together. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, going in, going coming into this week, where we have... Um, you know, somehow every game is now crucial. Every game, yeah, you can say <laughs> yeah, that again. Somehow, yeah. every game is now crucial. We'll have a key game to qualifying for the next Nations Cup or key games now because mm -hmm. it's a double header. Uh, I think the concern now should be how well the players they... can arrive early, mm -hmm. train before Friday. Mm. Because of the, I mean, the, a lot we, of know restrictions, the second wave, trap, yeah. uh, travel restri restrictions. travel restrictions and yeah. all of that. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's going to affect us a bit because I hear the coaches now complaining yeah, some about players oh, how early can it. they arrive. Yeah. We, might not even have to, we might not even get to train until Wednesday or Thursday mm. wow. before a game. So, that's where... That's... And then maybe I should just keep in on a lighter Correct. mode. Probably we should start calling some boys. What well, boys? From boys <laughs> on Anyways. the home front. Just, just say, guys, just get ready. <laughs> just in case. In case. Anyways. In case, we, in case, we, we, in case they find we, their players, don't, don't make yeah, it. Yeah, hopefully they all, they all turn up and uh, we get a good win against Syria. Before we leave Super Eagles players, uh, a couple of tweets. Adekunle uh, uh, Chukudi Daladi are saying, I'm particularly happy for the most expensive player in Napoli's history. Those talking, that's uh, Victor Simeon, of course. Uh, Joe Aribo, too, is in form. He's in the form of his life. Good one for the Super Eagles going into the international uh, break. We also have uh, another one uh, from Noble. Uh, you're saying, I foresee the Super Eagles picking up six points uh, from the double header against uh, Syria loan. So, I mean, everyone is excited. Everyone is very optimistic uh, going into this game, I guess, because it's Syria loan. But yeah, I mean, I said it the last time I was here that the, the assistant coach, Said we are preparing so hard yeah. to get a respectable scoreline score line. against Nigeria. So Interesting. Uh, four points would be disappointing. I oh. think six points should be the should aim be the Nigeria. target. Yeah. All right then. That's it. Uh, of course, uh, we'll come back on the show tomorrow. We'll be giving you updates uh, from the Super Eagles camp uh, in preparation for that game. Let's go to Europe now. Let's go to the English Premier League and talk about the matches that I played yesterday. Two big matches. Uh, one between Manchester City and Liverpool ended one apiece. Uh, it was quite a, a very a fascinating game, controversial, you'd say. Uh, Tottenham were also in action as well uh, against the West Brom. Hurricanes current as 150th Premier League goal. It's a remarkable return 
uh, for uh, Harry Kane. And last but not the least, I uh, uh, was between um, Leicester also were in action, Leicester 1-0 over Wolves. And the big one, Arsenal fans, uh, over to you. Uh, just a week after uh, beating Manchester United at Old Trafford, you've come back home and you've absolutely uh, got thrashed uh, got by destroyed. Aston Villa, Ole Watkins, <laughs> uh, you know, star of the show uh, in that game. Where do we, let, let's start from quickly, let's, let's get Liverpool, Man City mm -hmm. uh, out of the way. 1-1, um, one, one, uh, fair score line. It, yeah. Uh, so you forgive me, um, on Saturday, let me just mention this. Everton lost to United. Yeah. Uh, that was the third loss on the bounce. For First Carl time it's happening for Carl Angelo this is in a long time. Yeah. And then uh, for United, all of the troubles, we're able to grind out that result. It doesn't mean it's uh, back to back to the norm or yeah. it's hooray yet. Paper and over cracks. You way. know, I'll, that, I think that's the situation. That best right. describes the situation for United. But it's good. But they got the win. They got Fantastic. the win. Going to the break, let's see what happens. City, Liverpool. Um, I felt it was a game that uh, both teams were trying to uh, size up each other. Nobody wants to make a mistake early mm -hmm. on and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then you saw, usually you won't see City approach a game like that. Liverpool discovered that early and decided to pump in and all of that. Got that um, uh, penalty, questionable yeah. penalty or controversial. Which one? Opinion. Which one of them? They won. They won money end. Oh, controversial as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I feel. I feel it wasn't a penalty. Oh wow. I feel it's not enough. It's okay. Like Craig Potter, the referee, should so, have gone on to look at the screens by himself. Okay. Would have taken a better decision. But these things do happen. So it's, what about the second for, penalty? The then? Second penalty. The and that one is Gomez, controversial. Uh, the the, the handball, because yeah. of the new rule, it's no longer controversial. It's clear. His hmm. hands were off his body. Right. Or from okay. his body. But not in his natural position. Not in his natural pro position. proximity yeah. to where the shot was taken, though. Yeah, but it's, I mean, the, the hands are, were clearly. The rules are rules. Are rules, are rules. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yes, penalty. But but I don't agree that the money wasn't para was you don't controversial. Agree that I don't agree. Right. But, but, that's you. But is your, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. So, is your opinion, I guess. But, but then. It, it was it was it was a fair game. City should have won. De Bruyne lost. Was that a oh. fair re a reflection of, of the game? Even though Pep Guardiola agrees, Probably, but yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I think one of the teams should have should won. Should have won. I don't yes. think a draw, you know, was was really was a fair very, result. But yeah. if you were Klopp with all those injuries and you came to City, you got the result. I think you would feel. No, Klopp will feel good mm -hmm. that at least oh, I didn't go on, go on to lose. Yeah. Guardiola will feel very disappointed. Mm. I mean, you go check out where City Missed is on the chance. standings. You, you probably feel come yeah. on. Should have done better. Sterling seems to be out of form. Mm. Uh, KDB, yes, tried to come in, picked up a knock, looked like he struggled till the end. Yeah. Um, you know, that conviction that this is City is no longer there. Yeah, so not there. something has to That's, change. Probably yeah. after the international break, we change. see a different I, I, don't see, I don't see anything change. I don't, I don't come with the trailer <laughs> load of injuries. That's my worry. Let's, but we'll talk about that later let's, on. Let's get the thoughts now yeah. of uh, the uh, both uh, managers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jorgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola. What they have to say after that still next. They have usually more clear chances today they hadn't, and that's a compliment to my boys. And um, so we respect them a lot. I, I love the energy level of both teams tonight. It was a proper, proper fight on highest level, and that means you deny the opponent with the quality we have, with the quality they have. You deny the opponent, and um, in a lot of moments. And so I'm, I'm really happy with the result and the performance. I cannot speak about it because I didn't see it yet. So um, don't think it's now too important. Um, obviously, but everybody's talking about it. It looked and it sounds to me um, that it's um, obviously not 100% clear um, in that moment. So, I, but I can't say anything about it because I didn't see it back. I saw um, only Joe's back in that moment um, when when the, when the ball hit him. It could have been anywhere. I, I couldn't see that in the game. That game, that game, they started really well. Uh, they found between the lines and running behind uh, is not easy because they are so fast uh, up front with three today with four players. So, but uh, after the goal concede, the penalty, so we were much better. We equalized, and after we play with more courage, the back four, especially the second half, was much, much, much better. I think every team wins the three points, but. Uh, one point, one point. So we have played 12 games so far this season. We lost one. Unfortunately, we draw a little bit much. But uh, in general, uh, I think it's a, a fair, fair, fair result. City manager Pep Guardiola. Yeah, feels 
1-1 one, one was a fair uh, scoreline. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, considering uh, how they started uh, the game and all their issues well documented, uh, this is a, another very uh, topical issue yep, yep. has been um, the fixture congestion. Uh, Resulting into all manners of All injuries. kinds of injuries, coaches complaining. You saw yeah. uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on Saturday went in on you know, the organizers of the league and the broadcasters and all of that. So let's listen to uh, uh, Pep Guardiola and Jorgen Klopp again. Of course, they're not happy at all. For once, uh, agreeing on something. With, <laughs> with the situation of things when it comes to the fixtures in the English Premier League. Ole was right. So... City and us, we played on Tuesday. So there are always two teams who play Tuesday and two teams who play Wednesday. If the Tuesday teams are in contention now for the Saturday 12th, whatever, that's okay. It's not nice, but it's okay. But the Wednesday teams should not even be in consideration for that game. Just not. So Sky, BT, Premier League, whoever, BBC, whoever, they have to talk. We cannot deal with that situation like we always did before. Like, like because otherwise... And it's very important. The FA has to be in, involved. Tonight we lost. Tonight we lost um, Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm pretty sure Gareth Southgate is not fine. And if we continue like this, and hopefully we can play a, a Euro, a Euro, the Euros in the summer. Hopefully we can play. If they happen, let's see who will be part of that. Today the right back for the national team from England is injured. So and, and other players. So it's so demanding for the players. The same argument all the time so so i don't understand i understand how how the premier league or the people i don't know who's in charge to decide these kind of things but i don't understand how they don't understand the situation today all around the world is completely different in the past in the previous season when everything was three three substitutions all the leagues around the world but the, all the leagues around the world except this league maybe because uh, likes to be different um except to five to protect the players, to protect the football, to protect you know the physicality for the playing every three games because the situation is unusual, is is different. No happy campers there <laughs> at all. Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Club, but you do understand uh, where they're yeah, coming from, even sure. though uh, it's just the way things are these days, and uh, <sighs> sacrifices have to be made. Uh, sacrifices. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's the only word that's, that sounds a bit consoling. <laughs> yeah, but then again, it's it's weird, and I think I've been mentioning it for the, for the past few days. What about the substitution days. issue? Uh, voting against that should have been those two managers. That should have been a um, that should have been like a, a parity for the English Premier League, mm. since you know you have loads of games. games You've play. got cup games. A short time. You've got. Um, a league games that you don't want to play simultaneously. These teams, are These teams are in Europe and all of that. But hey, these things do happen. It As you said, sacrifice. Is. I don't support the idea of just rush it, just go and play two games within Resume. four days. But, but these things do happen. Yeah, it is. I mean, because is. of the we uniqueness of the season and the calendar. It's exactly. You know, They've got but, to find a way to play these games. We need but to go. I agree with Klopp and Pep. Yeah, fair enough. We need to go on a break now. When we come back, we'll be giving you updates uh, on what happens within Arsenal and uh, Aston Villa as well as Diego Armando Maradona. <laughs> You're welcome back to Charles Sport this morning. Let's talk about the Gunners. The Gunners were in action. Uh, last night against Aston Villa ended 3-0 uh, in case you missed it. No, not in favour of Arsenal, in favour of uh, Aston Villa. <laughs> Ollie Watkins. <laughs> Ollie Watkins uh, was the star uh, of the show. Arsenal, I mean, they got away without John McGinn goal, which was uh, chalked off. Oh, uh, they brilliant. should have seen that brilliant as a finish. sign. Yeah. Brilliant finish. They should have seen right that as a sign. Right, it was on the wall. Right, it was on the wall. And uh, so was the very surprise. first minute, you yeah. can see the goal. Yeah. And you didn't shape up. Mm. So, so it's going to happen. Interestingly, before the start of the game, I was telling a colleague, I see an offset on the cards. Mm. And it's like, now nah, Arsenal coming from the United wing, the they have party, they yeah. have this, that. I'm like, party okay, time. let's watch and enjoy. And just like you guys said, from the first minute, looked like um, Aston Villa just wanted to get something. Mm. And and that was what they did. Mm. Uh, I think it's their first, first time they're winning back-to-back -back, um, over Arsenal in a while.
Mm-hmm. It's their first, it's their best start to the camp, to the season you as know, well. I, I heard something yesterday from Tim Sherwood. A yep. lot of people thought it was harsh, but he says when Arsenal have possession, they seem not to have know what to do with it. They are In better, this game. they are better suited to teams that want to break them down, lock up, so they and can win. counter. But when they have teams who will let them play with have the ball. The ball yeah. It becomes a problem. That's a point. Yeah, because they lack creativity. They, yeah, it's they obvious. They create in the final thought. So if you lack creativity, who do you look up to? Can't find Messi Yeah, but he's not in the squad. They That's won't done. agree with me. I'm sure they'll probably... Messi was in the squad. Was it Danny Ceballos? Ceballos is not a creative player. No. Nah. Ceballos is not. Is still but you took, out, you took out a party and brought on... Say bios in the game. I'm like, okay. What's this guy doing? Right? <laughs> what, so what's going on here? And then the midfield, you know, just collapsed. And Grealish yes. had, maybe they need a Grealish in there too. Yeah, because yeah, Grealish, Grealish had fun. I mean, he probably dictated the toys play. With them. Toyed with them. It didn't look as if there was nobody on that right side. It made them look it's hopeless just, mm. across board. What's so, true? So um, no good result at all for the Arsenal. Of course, now Mitola, uh, Mikel Ateta. Uh, that has some very interesting things to say. We'll just get his uh, quota uh, out of the way. He says, first of all, congratulations to Aston Villa <laughs> for the way they played and the victory. After that, we performed below our standards. And I have to say, it's the first time I've seen us play and we're wearing a team. I have to take full responsibility for that. Mikel Ateta, in terms of taking responsibility but for they, it, what but, do you think he's talking about? But they played Mulder like three days before. Mm-hmm. One four nil in the Europa League. Yeah, but there's a level. The level in competition is different. So, Aston Villa have been going great guns in the Premier League, oh, like wow. I said. But, but could best you start in a while? That, that's Sixth on the table. Yeah. The, the, the season, uh, Conte won for Chelsea. Mm-hmm. They played a game like this, lost to Arsenal three. And changes for me, changed a lot. They and they ended up winning. Could this be that kind of turning point? Uh, without a creative person, mm-hmm. it should be difficult to agree exactly. to that. It's going to be same of same of the same. All right. All right, then, before we look at the papers, uh, Arsenal fans, uh, better luck next time after the international break. Maybe. Uh, perhaps. Hopefully, uh, you don't come back with injuries. <laughs> Let's talk about Diego Maradona uh, quickly before we uh, look at the papers. Mm-hmm. Maradona is still recovering uh, yeah. from that uh, brain uh, surgery. And the, this guy, look at this particular fans guy. Fans continue here. to show This support. guy has been showing up every we day did. at the hospital. Just to say Maradona know. means a lot to us. <laughs> Obviously, he's an absolute legend. I mean, it's, it's a good oh. sight. It's a good story. Yeah. Um, shows you how the river, the Highly legends revert. and all of that. Yeah. I mean, it, it also drums up support for Maradona. Wherever he's in that, on that hospital bed. Psychologically. Psychologically he's thinking, like, wow. wow. They're rooting for me out there. You know, so I can't, yeah. I can't. Give up the doctors, play a role the doctors in his, process. his recovery process. Yeah. Yeah. The doctors say he's even a, it's, they're surprised at how well... It's taking surgery the surgery. The I mean, such well. things, such things probably give you that uh, boost. boost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think I, I think it's it's solid, really, and uh, we can only wish him a very very quick recovery. I mean, look at that face mask we're adorned with a picture of uh, Diego Maradona. That's how I you mean, treat can, a legend. As an absolute legend, soonest and fullest uh, recovery uh, uh, for Diego Armando Maradona. We can't wait for him to be back. Yep. Uh, on the pitch, coaching. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Might not be the greatest coach, but I mean, it's, uh, not, yeah. it's not doing too badly. I love us remember him more for his playing days. Of course. Yeah. Everything after, well, yeah, it's, it's, well. Just, it's just entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if we can take a look at the papers now. And uh, before we wrap up uh, the show, let's yeah. see if we can get uh, that across. Uh, let's see if we can start with complete sports if we have it. And mm. let, let's take a look at some of the stories. Obviously, what we have there are stories about. Super Eagles players, mm-hmm. uh, we already talked about it, getting on the score sheets. You also have uh, a story on Raw, the things you said uh, about get out Raw, and he, he's saying he hopes that mm. the guys will be at their best. Uh, hopefully, they come on time. We can only hope, really. Mm. We can at, at least get... There's not much to say I, I think, about that. I'm not trying to sound a bit... Um, like an alarmist. Yeah, or probably sound like That's too confident. Uh, but one, two training sessions should, should be, be fine, should be yeah. fine before the first game. And then we'll and see what that, happens after Especially this. on the back yeah. of those two games uh, uh, during the last international yep. break mm-hmm. as well. Let's go to Sporting, uh, sporting Life. Uh, Osimhen Nets' uh, second goal of the season. We talked about that already. Real Madrid to revive our interest in Pogba. Uh, I'm not very sure uh, about it. This one, a bit worrying story. Uh, Samuel Leto involved in a road accident. Mm-hmm. but. Uh, seems to be doing well now, yeah, uh, good thankfully. News. thankfully. Uh, 
Yeah. Inter are determined to bring Conte to San Siro. <laughs> um, Neymar okay. tells the agent he wants to stay at PSG. Um, of course, the results are from uh, the La Liga as well. Yeah. Real Madrid. No, no, yeah, we have to say something about it. Real Madrid lost to Valencia 4-1. And they gave away four penalties. I've never seen anything like that before. Ever so reliable partnership between Sergio Ramos and Varane. And, and it, they were made to look like schoolboys. Mm. Well, I agree. Uh, bad, bad game. Bad approach. S bad what day. What was that about? Uh, I, I don't know. Zidane will probably have to find answers to whatever happened. How but do that? Uh, Varane had been a suspect. Yeah, he's Lucas been. Lucas Vasquez had been playing as a makeshift right back. back. Mm. So it obviously has not The signs have been there. I mean, mm. it's not been working. So um, a change of manager? Hopefully, they, no, I don't, think it's, a, I don't think it's about a change of manager. Nah. The personnel so, has to come in. So early. But who is going to get to, uh, to, to start your games? That's what Zidane should be thinking of, really, okay. at this mm. point. They're missing some big games as well. So. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, COVID and stuff. And, and, uh, and then you have COVID situation. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, good. Um, so, wrote to me. Many thanks. I uh, appreciate your time many on the thanks, show guys. once again. Hopefully thank we you. get to do this again uh, pretty soon. No problem. All right. Thank you for watching as well. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I am Tayo Salah. All right. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your day today. We'll be here again tomorrow. I'm Yemi Adabai. Bye-bye.